Welcome to this month's Connect the Dots, an industry intelligence production. I'm your host, Alec Gaylord. Today's topic is, look at the economy, why aren't we celebrating? Lately, the Department of Commerce reports that the U.S. economy just finished 2021 on a high note. Fourth quarter GDP growth was 6.9%, far outpacing economists' expectations, and it was the strongest recorded growth since the Reagan expansion in 1984. Unemployment was just 3.9% in December, down from almost 7% a year ago when the pandemic was still having a chokehold on the economy. The last time we had an improvement of this magnitude, it took three and a half years to accomplish during the Obama era. So with all that good news, why aren't we seeing more cheers? From Main Street to Wall Street, if you ask around, you'll get an earful from people in all walks of life. Business owners felt that they spent 2021 roughing it in an insanely tight labor market. Employers in many industries had trouble finding qualified candidates even after raising the wages and doling out bonuses. And the surging wages came on top of cost increases everywhere because of supply constraints. Even now, business owners are feeling the squeeze all around. And workers aren't too happy either. According to a New York Times poll in December, only 17% of workers say their pay has kept up with inflation. A recent University of Michigan survey shows that consumer sentiment in January dropped to the lowest point since 2011. Okay, that's for the Main Street. Now what about the Wall Street investors? Well, investment firm Fidelity says 2021 was a difficult year for bonds. And what about the stocks? Well, the wild swings of major stock indices we've been seeing lately means investors have no confidence. If there's anything that investors hate, it's a lack of certainty coming from the federal government during a runaway inflation. So how can we have so much good news and so much bad news simultaneously? How did we get here? A year ago, the Biden administration enacted a $1.9 trillion pandemic rescue plan following an already jaw-dropping $900 billion package from the Trump administration at the onset of the pandemic. Well, when consumers have extra money in their pocket, they spend. That's natural behavior no matter who you are. But with factory production and supply chain not keeping up with the demand, inflation surged to record levels. The fear of the COVID virus gave workers justification to stay home, while a generous financial cushion allowed many people to stay out of work without financial consequences. Okay, so the solution from the federal government was to implement mass vaccination throughout 2021 and then turn off the financial assistance. Did it work? All right, let's see. So according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, we still have 7 million Americans staying out of work even though there are 11 million unfilled jobs out there. That's 4 million more jobs than there are unemployed people. And more than half of the unemployed people quit their jobs just within the last few months. So what's going on here? Well, you might have heard of the infamous Great Resignation. And to be honest, there's no simple explanation. Some people quit because they're angry at workplace vaccination mandates. But many quit because they feel the runaway inflation has nullified any wage increases offered by their employers. With 64% of Americans already fully vaccinated, and the rest are pretty much hardened anti-vaxxers, there's not much more the government can do on that front. So bringing down the inflation is the key move the federal government must make in order to get more people back to work. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell finally revised his view of the current inflation from being transitory to now being a more widespread problem. After the recent Federal Reserve meeting, Powell suggests a likelihood of raising the interest rates in March. Will that come soon enough? And will the interest rate hikes be too little or too much? That's a trillion dollar question. For all of you who are history buffs, you may remember that the excesses of the Roaring Twenties were followed by the Great Depression. Now, we're much stronger as a society with better safeguards than in 1929, but still, are we seeing a bust coming? Economists would describe the current stage of our economy as the tail end of a long expansion. Historically, this phase is characterized by four indicators. An increasing inflation rate, declining bond prices, rising interest rates, and increasingly restrictive economic policy. 
So far, we've got the first two, and the next two are probably coming soon. The legendary investor Jeremy Grantham has long been dismayed by the reckless spending on not just consumer goods, but also on speculative investments. We have seen that economic excesses have built up simultaneous bubbles across real estate, stocks, bonds, commodities, and even bitcoins in the last two years. Now, what will happen when these bubbles burst all at once? Well, according to Grantham's estimate, collectively, Americans will lose $35 trillion in wealth, and the values of our assets will decline by a third. Wow. It doesn't take a genius to see that if all of our assets lose a third of their values, that's going to give us a pretty bad recession. So, is there still something our government can do to prevent the day of reckoning from approaching? Well, two factors may decide this. First, will the Democrats be able to pass at least parts of President Biden's Build Back Better plan? The inability to do so is going to have negative impact on GDP. Second, the interest rate. If the rate hike is minimal, inflation will keep going, and the bubbles will keep expanding, and the labor market will not ease. However, investors are also known to overreact. If investors think the Federal Reserve's rate hike is too aggressive, the stock market will be the first to have a crash. So, Mr. Powell, please tread carefully. That's it for today. I'm Alec Gaylord with Industry Intelligence. We help you better understand your industry's challenges. Visit our website at www.industryintel.com. Check out our blog and our podcast. Maybe give us a call. Ask us about Microsoft Teams integration. Have a great day and keep the dots connected.